The Houston Texans come away with a loss at Green Bay in Lambeau Field. Another frustrating performance offensively for the Houston Texans. We're going to get into it. What is going on, everybody? Welcome back to a brand new episode of The Lead. Your host, as always, Harley Dugan. This is The Lead Houston, where it's all Houston all the time. And Man, it is tough to complete that sentence. Just as much as it is tough to completely watch the Houston Texans offensively have another atrocious performance. The offense isn't fun to watch uh, regardless, though. Joe Mixon had yourself a really good game today. Two touchdowns, over 100 yards rushing. Uh, he was the whole offense, unfortunately. When I challenged the Houston Texans just on Saturday, for the Houston Texans offense specifically, I challenge them to be the calling card this week. Be the, the the bright side of the day when it comes to Sunday football. And it just wasn't the case. The Houston Texans defense, again, has been magnificent. Today, four, missing four starters today. And the Houston Texans defense said, we got you. No problem. We're going to hold our end of the bargain. And if this defense played, uh, the defense did play like this. If the offense played like the defense, well, hell, we'd be talking about a blowout win right now from the Houston Texans. But no, we're looking at the opposite side of things. We drop a loss to the Green Bay Packers in a game that if you didn't have those turnovers from the defense, I'm quite sure that the Packers whoop your ass just like the Minnesota Vikings did a few weeks ago. That's how bad it is for the Houston Texans offensively and the offensive line because both things play hand in hand, and the offensive line was not pretty to see today. Continuous pressure all over on C.J. Stroud. He was vividly upset and talking to the offensive line, to everyone on the sidelines, threw his helmet on the ground. It is upsetting to see this because we were hyping up this offense to be special this year. And to me, I'm not given the excuse that Nico Collins is out. So, no, I'm not given that excuse. The excuse was it doesn't matter when one of the wide receivers are out because this offense is so highly powered that it didn't matter. Offensively, you shouldn't miss a beat too much. And the Houston Texans only dropped 22 points, three points in the second half. It's just another frustrating loss, another frustrating performance from the offense and the offensive line. There are people to be blamed here. And one of the people to be blamed is Bobby Slowick, the offensive coordinator. Chris Strausser, the offensive lines coach, and the whole entire offensive line. I look, man, it is tough. I can't, I don't know what to do, and I don't know what the Texans need to do to make this offensive line play better. You've put in enough resources on the offensive line. They're not benching nobody. Laramie Tunsil, we already know what we traded for him. You spent a first-round pick to Kenya Green, a second-round pick to Drew Scruggs. You traded for and extended Shaq Mason. You already gave Titus Howard his extension as well. Why aren't they playing better? There have been seven games so far this year where they have played fully healthy. We didn't see this offensive line at all last year which I was hoping to see last year, just never happened. They weren't fully healthy all at the same time. The Texans' offensive line has been the black spot on this team, and it is just continuous. It doesn't matter. I thought that maybe we were trending in the right direction the last two weeks. It just didn't happen. The Texans' defense, like I said, forced some turnovers. Neville Hewitt had yourself a day. Kalen Bullock, third interception for his rookie year. Um, it's tough to even talk about the game. Because it's frustrating. It's, it's tough, man. This is to ad nauseum that the Houston Texans continue to have lackluster offensive performances. It is atrocious to see that the Houston Texans cannot play for four quarters. They lost to the Green Bay Packers. They've lost to the Minnesota Vikings. They're 5-2 and two right now. Better football is hopefully ahead, but, man, it is, it, it is tough. 
it is what it is. Is that what it is? That, is that the case when it comes to the offensive line? It is what it is. Like, are they not going to play playing better at some point during this year? I'm still in the belief and I am still going to have faith that regardless of seven games that they fully played this season, this is the only time they fully played all together. And yes, we could blame Larry Tunsil, which I have multiple times because that man could have came to voluntary mini camps and he could have set his ass there and he could have been an actual veteran, an actual captain and shown the offensive line, some communication, some continuity and be more together than what they are right now. All it takes is one stunt. You get these two right here, these two defensive linemen. All they got to do is this and it's over. The offensive line doesn't know what to do. They're running around with a chicken with their head. They're cut off. You can't figure out what to do. C.J. Stroud's upset. Offensively, you can't get it going. Joe Mixon's the only thing you got offensively. That's what we're doing. Bobby Slowick has to be talked about. Chris Strasser, the offensive line coach, has to be talked about. This team, this offensive line is coached awfully. It is poorly coached. The miscommunication woes has to fall somewhere. And I'm looking at Chris Strausser, I'm looking at Bobby Sloan, and I'm looking at D'Amico Ryans, buddy. What the hell happened at the end of the game where you just decided to be a conservative Texan? You just decided to be a conservative head coach and kick a field goal? No, I don't want that again. I'm done watching those Houston Texans. I've seen those Houston Texans before. I've seen conservative play, and it's been a rerun for quite some time. I've seen Gary Kubiak be conservative and lose the football game like today. You should have went down there. You're there to score a touchdowns, man. That's what the point of the game is. D'Amico Ryans wants to say, oh, well, I thought that cat that throw to Tank Dell on third and 15 was a catch. Okay, A, you didn't challenge it. B, let's say you did. Let's say they overturn it, and let's say it was a catch. Then what? It's fourth and five. You're still going to kick a field goal. Oh, but the Packers use a timeout. Well, congratulations. They use a damn timeout. They're still got a minute 40 left on the clock. And you kick a field goal. Cool. It's still GG's. I don't understand the clock management at the end of the game there by D'Amico Ryans. I don't. I don't understand the conservative play calling at the end of the game by D'Amico Ryans as well. When you have CJ Stroud and he was making plays that drive right there, he was making plays and he was on his own two feet at times. The man said, screw it. I don't even want to throw it. I'm just going to start running the ball. And he tried to do his best Lamar Jackson impersonation. And Hey, he got, he took a lick. He sure did, but he got you that first down. C.J. Stroud, I would never doubt him on a game-winning drive, regardless of how the game's looked so far. Offensive line has been awful. Chris Strausser, you need to be questioned. Bobby Slowick is in question. D'Amico Ryans is in question. But the Houston Texans fall to 5-2. and two. They move on next week, coming back home to play the Indianapolis Colts in a second bout of this divisional rivalry where the Colts did win today and they beat the Miami Dolphins 16 to 10. The Houston Texans are only one game ahead of the Indianapolis Colts. So this coming week, divisional week, uh, yeah, you need a win, man. You need a win to move to six and two. The Texans need to do better. And we all know this. It's atrocious to watch his team offensively play football, man. It's a, uh, it's a frustrating loss. Very, very frustrating, but, I'm always going to be here. As always, guys, go Astros, go Rockets, go Texans. You have a blessed day.